Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Andrew Henry from the Wisdom and Life Apostolic Church of Jesus Christ. Today's message from the sanctuary is entitled, The Ethos and Pathos of God. This message will change your perspective on how you view God. Let's not waste any more time. Come join me as we enter into the sanctuary and delve into the Word of God. You certainly won't forget it. The Lord said, Ethos and Pathos. You know that's Greek. Now I don't think I did. I didn't take any Greek classes as yet. <laughs> but God speaks to us in any way. Yes, he does. The ethos and pathos of God. We live in a dispensation that the church, as well as in all of the Christian milieu and you notice I made a distinction between the church and Christianity. But we live in this dispensation where many have developed the word is proclivity to downplay the intended veracity or precision of holiness that has been transmitted by God through holy men and women to them who love the Lord. And so people in the church and the Christian milieu have downplayed holiness. In other words, holiness is passé. In other words, it's not necessary. Have you ever heard those words? The Christian movement, and especially here in North America, has categorically secularized, so they've secularized and nominalized the once docile and amenable faith and this amenable faith is that people are capable or easily submissive but the North American especially North American it's everywhere it's all over the world really in the Christian movement they have secularized and made this faith nominal in so much that it sometimes seemingly is losing its effect say amen. amen and it is turning into what I when I meditate on it call the amateur night at the Apollo I don't know if you Church is now the amateur night at the Apollo. And if you know anything about the amateur night at the Apollo, people will come up and perform and they're either booed or applaud. And so people come to the house of God now to hear something good. Well, I'm going somewhere. And if it's not to your taste, boo! Boo out. Oh well. This is what has become the sticker. Look around. Look everywhere. It's all over. It's easily accessible. Get on the internet. Look YouTube. Look everywhere. Follow, go visit any church. It's the amateur night. And when you walk into the amateur night, you gotta walk in with the and you gotta have the beat, you see. <laughs> Ah, and that's what, that's a, that sounds like the New Age Church. Lord have mercy. So when you're walking, that very beat, that's just the cold place, but you hear. Right. And then my wife called it the chicken dance. <laughs> and that's what's being offered in the church today. A sense of I gotta please you in order for you to be here. 
Well, you better ask somebody because I'm not in the pleasing business. Yes. Hmm? Yes, but North, and I'm pinpointing North America because we are the culprit. We have taken a docile church and an amenable church where people submitted their ways, where some people submitted their will. And when they went into the house of God, they sang from their heart. They sang the praises of God from their heart. In so much that when you're walking and you feel the presence. Oh my God. I, well, okay. I'm not coming. <laughs> the reality is that we of contemporary time lack the propensity to pursue after God with the desire to make him our bosom friend in relationship. We lack the drive, we lack the urge, we lack the courage to go after God. For going after God means trouble. Hmm? Going after God means that hell will break loose on you. Hmm? Come on, come on. That's right. Going after God means that all your family and friends will turn their back on you. That's right. Hey, That's right. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory be to God. But right. God is looking for a David. Yes. That's right. Oh, Shanda. That's right. Hallelujah to God. That's He's looking for somebody who will love him, somebody who will woe him, somebody who will draw nigh unto him. Or he said, if you draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. He's looking for a David in this generation. He's looking for somebody who will go crazy over him. I said, I love the Lord with all my heart. He's looking for somebody. And God doesn't care who somebody to raise up. Because sometimes we're looking at the tall, handsome one. But it's not the tall, handsome one. It's the little ruddy one that's in the field that no one cares about. But somebody will raise up and say, For God I live. Oh, somebody said, For God I die. God is looking for somebody with that fortitude. Mm hmm. Because now of this compromission that is found within the church. Oh my, 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 my. Oh my God. I live to say that compromission in the church. And it's not a hidden compromission. It is wide open. Oh, compromising is wide open in the church of Jesus Christ. Anything goes. Anything goes as long as you give the big money oh yeah and if you have a good job oh they love you and before long uh, taking trips <laughs> help me lord anything goes in the house of god today you can live right and still be accepted in the house of God. All right. But well, no, because of this compromise within the church, many have received a misinterpreted understanding of what the Lord is and what He and His church really stands for and truly represents. People don't understand God anymore. For He's not being taught. The way he ought to be taught anymore. God is not taught to people as a consuming fire. God, in the last 25 years, yeah, has been taught to people as a, hmm, a, let's call it by name. He is a prostitute who you can extract whatever you want.